Welcome everyone, this is Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your Mindset Coach today. And today we're gonna to be talking about relationships and about marriage. Now, marriage is one of those things that today is going to be an optional thing, right? Some people are not even getting married. Some people are having spiritual marriages where they're saying, well, we're married, you, you know, you give them a ring and things like that. And it's not official, like what here in America is, you know, it's a legal binding agreement between two people. And that can be some sketchiness or some ice cold water, dark water, murky water, whatever you want to call it. It could be a bad thing, especially for men, right? Marriage is a bad deal for men because a man can go into a relationship and lose half his stuff, lose the kids, lose the house, all because their person that they chose is not happy or doesn't want to be married anymore. But what is the reason for that? Do we live in a finicky society where people just say, well, you know what? This was nice, but, you know, this is not going to work for me. Oh, you know, like, they're not able to pay the bills anymore, so, you know, this is not going to work for me. Oh, you know, the sex is not good, you know, that's not going to work for me. Oh, you know, like, they're not the right height or personality, it's not going to work for me. Before marriage, you should be answering all of these questions. What would happen if they lost everything? If they weren't able to walk anymore, they get in a car accident, they, you know, lose all their hair. Do you stay with them, right? Marriage was once until death do us part, but now marriage is until I don't feel like doing my part anymore. And that's where we are. A lot of people don't want to do the part. A lot of people don't want to show up. A lot of people don't want to take responsibility for the choice or the decision that they make. And it doesn't matter on what type of institution, whether you're a Catholic or if you are atheist or whatever, you go into marriage and then you're like, well, this is not what I thought. I will say there are going to be some times when you go into a marriage and you do your due diligence and it's just not right. The expectations have to be there, right? The expectations do have to be there. But that's something that is talked about before marriage, not when you're just in the marriage. And you're like, oh, hey, I want to create some expectations for you. Oh, what? you know, we didn't agree upon these expectations, right? So now it's different. And I just did a whole episode on expectations. There's a reason why I did an episode on expectations. So we can create the expectations because if we don't have expectations, then we're just going to be living in a lawless society. And it's important that we can be on the right track and know and have a good understanding of what we are going to be getting out of something, whether it be in our own personal lives, our career, or in our relationships and our marriage. What is that expectation? Maybe it can be about how many date nights you have a month. Maybe how many vacations you have a year. Maybe it be how many times you guys have sex a week. Those conversations are always going to be fluid, meaning sometimes you might be able to go on more vacations. Sometimes you're going to go on less vacations. Sometimes you're going to have more sex. Sometimes you're going to have less sex. However, if a person is in the mindset, well, these are the expectations. Well, that's the rule. That's going to be the guideline that we follow because you're not going to go into a marriage saying the expectation is that you're going to stay loyal to your partner. You're not going to go out and have other relations, whether it be emotional relationships or physical relationships, because if you do that, that's considered cheating, right? So now if the person is cheating in a relationship, was that not talked about? Oh, well, the reason why I am cheating and this is what happens is because you're always yelling at me or, do, you know, you never appreciate me or you don't hold me or hug me the same or you don't bring me flowers anymore. The expectations were never there. Just because someone was doing something and they stopped, it didn't mean that was the expectation because you never talked about it. So what is the expectation? You might say, if you are a woman to the man, my expectation before we get married is that you're able to pay the bills and you're able to buy me flowers at least once a month. We go on a date night once a month and we talk at least two times a week without the TV on, right? Does that happen? No. Sometimes you're going to get busy, kids. You're going to find that you're not able to keep that all the time, but you do your best and you try to stay on track rather than just on any track. This is where people fall short when it comes to marriages. And that's why the divorce rate is 50%. Some survive, some don't. Oh, you know, I just don't feel like being married anymore. Oh, this is just not working out in my favor. Well, if 50% of marriages end in divorce, we need to look at that 50% now. How many of those divorces are being initiated by women? Well, 80% of those 50% is going to be initiated by women. So 80% of women are going to initiate a divorce versus 20% of men who are going to initiate a divorce. 
But the reason why a woman initiates a divorce is going to be more on feelings and emotions typically. Sometimes it can be about structure and the reason why they say non-reconcilable differences is because the woman's just not happy anymore. Oh, it's because of finances, right? We give ourselves a lie and it becomes our truth. And so today we're going to be talking about that and I want to be breaking down a clip, very mindset OD-esque type of uh, clip because this is of a guest that was on talking about their life, what they do for work. And then we need to understand that in these clips, we are going to be understanding something about what is going on in the person's mindset. And then from there, we say, you know what, this is their mindset, but it's a common mindset too. We have to watch out for those type of mindsets, especially as men, because you don't want to find yourself on the other end of an unhappy woman because she wants to be a masculine type mentality and she didn't do her due diligence to create the expectations and to understand what she truly wanted. The ideals of what society says might not be the ideals of what you say. Some people will conform and some people don't want to change. The feminism movement has poisoned so many minds and we have to do our due diligence that we don't get the minds that are poisoned. Or if we do get the minds that are poisoned, they understand that they're thinking in the wrong way and they want to make some changes and they're willing to make those changes. So let's take a look at some of those clips right now and then begin to break those down. I think I had some really specific expectations based on what I saw from my parents about what a marriage should look like. And so, yeah, I think at that point, when I, when I look back, what I see there is that I had expectations that this person clearly could not fulfill. And I would, there was so much frustration in trying to have someone be something that they just innately were not. He tried, but it just, it was like pulling teeth. So in that first clip, she was talking about expectations. Again, I talked about a whole episode on expectations. When you are about to get into marriage, not so much of a relationship because you're still learning in the relationship, right? When you are in a relationship, the expectations might not be solidified. However, you will have solidified expectations before you go to marriage, or at least you should. Some people are going to do their due diligence. Some people are not going to do their due diligence when it comes to having good, clear, defined expectations when it comes before marriage. So she has an expectation for the guy. When she's in the marriage, she's like, well, you know, like the expectations are unfair, right? For me to expect these things of him. Maybe because she didn't talk to him about it or he didn't talk to her about the expectations. So yeah, it is unfair. But at the same time, why are we not taking time before the marriage to go through those expectations. And it's important that we do that. Otherwise, we're going to have someone in the marriage or it's like, wait, I don't know what's going on, right? This is not what I expected. The reason why is because you didn't create clear expectations. So let's look at the next clip and then begin to dissect that too. I have not taken responsibility for my part in this. Because of, of course, when you're frustrated, you start saying things you shouldn't be saying and being mean and, you know, just withholding love punishing that person in some sort of fashion, right? Shutting down emotionally, numbing up, you know, just all those things that we do to kind of push people away. And so when that epiphany came to me, I sat him down and I said, listen, I am so sorry. I have been judging you. I have been making you wrong. I've had such high expectations of you. And I realized that, you know what? You're great the way you are. There's nothing wrong with you. It just doesn't work for me. All right. So in this clip, right, it's now that belief, right? We told ourselves something long enough, right? The expectation, this is not working. Now I'm going to take ownership. I'm going to say, all right, it's not you, it's me. I'm sure you probably heard that line before. It's not you, it's me. But then at the end, but this is not working for me. It's not working for me. Most people are not going to say, well, I'm not working for me. Let me make some changes. Because if that was the case, you would stay in the marriage, you would make it work. But this is not working for me right? You're not working for me. What I thought, what I expected is not working for me. I'm changing. I want to make some changes. Divorce. We throw our issues away rather than fix them today. And it's a big problem in our world, especially for men. So let's look at our third clip. Is that we are where we are. And so it was great because it was such a powerful conversation for me to just be like, you are whole and complete and perfect just the way you are. And so am I. And this is just not going to work. To take it another step further, you know, being Catholic and going through this process, it was the moment in my life where I finally said, I am going to stop people pleasing. 
I'm going to stop trying to look good for people. And I'm just going to do what makes me happy. Because there was this point where I was like, okay, I could stay. I could, I could, you know, kind of maybe get my own bedroom or, you know, just, I was trying to think of other things I could do rather than getting divorced. But I was like, that has no integrity. And I deserve better. I deserve to have what it is that I want. The kind of relationship that I've been dreaming of my whole life is out there. I know it is. And I just have to love myself enough to be willing to stand for that. So as you're listening to it, right, it continues to talk about, you know, it's just not working out, things along those lines. But then she hits you with one of these, I deserve better. So she chose someone who wasn't good enough. No, right? I deserve better. It's a mindset where we give ourselves a, a goal, right? And then somewhere along the line, we don't do our due diligence and we realize that the person that we're with is not going to be the person that's going to help us get to our goal or ideal. Sadly, you know, she wanted to be happy. She wants to have this vision for herself on what a relationship is and she can get it and good on her, right? I encourage people that if you don't have the relationship that you dream of to do the work to get the relationship that you dream of, but you shouldn't get married and then realize that that should be something that's done before marriage. And this is not to attack her. I think she's a wonderful person, but this is just common, a common mindset in the world. We rush into marriage. We rush into an ideal we think is what we think we want in marriage, but it is not exactly what we want. The final two clips that I'm going to be sharing with you is the current mindset of how many of women are going to be thinking. Now, what is happening? And I've had relationship coaches on in the past. I'm sure you can remember a couple of them that talked about the feminine superpower, where femininity is actually a superpower. And I'm not talking about trans and men trying to be women and dress as women and Budweiser's doing all the woman crap and Nike's allowing men to wear woman apparel and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a real woman, a natural woman, and she's allowing her femininity to show, to shine. It's a superpower. And I know it has become shunned with the whole feminism movement. And to go out and be masculine, go out and protect yourself and provide for yourself. We live in that type of world and that mentality. However, that is not where you shine. It's like saying, hey, um, fish, I want you to climb a tree. That is not a fair judge of skill and character and ethic. The same thing is true when a woman steps into her feminine nature, her feminine superpower. She's vulnerable, but she's also loving, caring, and nurturing. That is what a man needs to compliment himself, especially a masculine man who is in his, you know, again, his mission state, his purpose state. He's hungry and he needs someone to support them. It complements each other. Think of uh, yin and yang, the good and the bad, or salty and sweet. It complements each other so well. That's what we need in a relationship to compliment. And this is the proof right here. I think also too, I had, I thought, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I thought I wanted someone like me. Like, okay, Mm -hmm. I want someone who's outgoing and like kind of an alpha energy. Oh Mm -hmm. my gosh. You were like butting heads like crazy. My husband now is like polar opposite. He is quiet and shy and he's sweet and he's very, he's very soft hearted and you know, has a very strong feminine energy, very intuitive. So as you can see, it doesn't matter about if you're a woman, you want to have a masculine energy. And if you're a male, you want to have a feminine energy. It doesn't matter. I talked about this in an episode. I don't even know what episode number it was, probably like 180 or something like that. It was a, a little bit back, right? So if you have been a long time listener, kudos, welcome. And thank you. I want people to realize that we talk about this, right? Coaching a session is a subsequent episode where we're giving you stronger mindsets. And I do my best to make sure that we do a full circle sometimes. So people who are just joining into the show, I don't expect people to listen from episode one all the way to 300. I just want people to understand that there is a mindset to it. And the mindset I talked about is in a relationship, you have to have that compliment. So what happened in the clip is that she said, well, I want it a person that was like me. I wanted an alpha type mentality and realized in a relationship, just two alphas, just button heads, button heads, button heads. It doesn't work. If you think of a wolf pack, for example, yeah, you might have an alpha type of personality and they go against a true alpha type personality and that alpha personality that lost is now the beta. 
the moment the alpha doesn't show up, the beta takes power, right? It's okay to have a beta power, but when you have two alphas, fighting, fighting, fighting is always conflict. It doesn't work. So what had happened, and I encourage you to listen to the episode. I know this is out of context and these are clips. We were talking about just how he was doing things and she's finding reasons for the things she didn't like. But then we get into this clip right here. Number one, appreciation. We so much focus on what's missing, what's wrong. And so therefore, where focus goes, energy flows, right? But for me, I really focus on appreciation of my husband. Everything. Even when he's not doing anything and he's just there. I just, you know what? You're awesome. You are just an incredible human being. And he'll say, why? What did I do? Like, nothing. You just are amazing. All right. So in that clip right there, it's kind of like a hypocrisy clip a little bit because she was saying how her first marriage where he would come home, he would make all the bread, the bacon, pay all the bills. And then he would come home, sit on the sofa, go in his workshop and he would do whatever, build whatever. Now she's saying here that, oh, I don't care if you're doing nothing. I'm just going to love you and appreciate you. But if the alpha, the first marriage was on the sofa and doing the things that he was doing and she wasn't going in his workshop saying, I love you and I appreciate you, right? So it's a conflict of ideals and beliefs. And the reason I talk about that is, again, because we give ourselves a belief and idea. And as long as we give ourselves that belief and idea, it becomes our truth and our reality. And so when we give ourselves that belief in that reality, it contradicts what we want. And this is where marriage and relationships get dicey. This is where I tell people to ensure that you have the coach that you want that's going to give you the mindset that you want. For me, if I was going to get marriage advice, I would probably want to get marriage advice from a person who was married for a substantial amount of time and did not get divorced. Now, before I get married, I would probably want to talk to someone who got divorced and I would want to know what type of issues they face and that the reason why they got a divorce. So it depends on where you are. Yes, a person who has been through divorce and found a good relationship can be a great relationship uh, asset coach. However, just because they're a great relationship asset and coach, it doesn't mean that they're going to be a good fit. I always tell people, listen, we can do our due diligence and we can find some stuff that the person kept secret, maybe bad finances, maybe secrets of uh, past history, trauma, whatever. And that could be a deal breaker. It's important that you work with your person that you're going to be with. You ask those deep questions and you're not going to know everything. But then at the same time, you have to be willing to work through everything. There's going to be moments where maybe someone needs your support. And the last thing you want in a relationship is someone is struggling for the person to abandon you and betray you. It's common, right? If it's just not working, we throw it away. However, we do have to get into that repair mentality. Because if we're always just throwing things away that are broken, we're just going to have landfills full of things, hidden treasures that are able to be fixed with just a ding or a bang or a piece of wood or a little bit of glue. Sometimes in our relationships, right, the things that need to be fixed, communication, understanding, and then understanding if you are in this power, do you want to be in that power? Maybe you do, but why not do your due diligence? before you get married. Why not make sure that you're marrying someone because you want to marry them and not because of the ideals of other people, of society. And I know society will push you this way and that way. Society will tell you to eat all this fast food and you get fat. Do you blame society or do you blame yourself for getting fat? We are the person who put the hamburger in our mouth. We are the person who ate the french fries on the bottom of the bag. We are the people who did not decide to work out. So it is our responsibility at the end of the day, and we have to take ownership. And I understand the idea of taking ownership is one of those things that people are like, oh, I got to take ownership. And that's going to be a lot of work. That's going to suck. No one said that marriage was easy, but marriage doesn't have to be hard. Marriage does not have to be hard. It is work. It, it, it does require maintenance. And if you are just going to give yourself a mindset, oh, this guy is no good for me or this girl is no good for me. However. For the right guy, he, you know, I don't care if he's doing nothing, I'm going to love him. Oh, for the right guy, you know, as long as he cooks and he cleans and he does what I want him to, then I'm going to be happy. I deserve to be happy. It's the second most dangerous saying. 
a person could say. I deserve to be happy. Second most dangerous. The first most dangerous saying is, it has always been done this way. And the second most dangerous is, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be happy at the expense of anyone else. So a woman will destroy family because she wants to be happy. Or she feels that there's something else out there for her. When she can create and cultivate a relationship. Because even in the clip, I'm sure you probably heard it. She says, oh, I can make it work. I can get a different room and, you know, but, but, but it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't what I wanted. So what I want today is not what I need. I want immediate gratification. I don't want work. I want easy. I don't want hard. Now, again, a marriage should not be difficult. However, the journeys that require the most amount of work, pain, struggle become the best journeys in your life. My parents' relationship has not always been butterflies. They should have got a divorce, according to our standards today. They should have got a divorce. They shouldn't be together anymore. However, now they are still married. They stuck it out. They allowed their vows to be there. So death do his part. I don't think they're going to get divorced at this point in their life, right? They have come too far. But then again, understanding just because you came too far doesn't mean you can't turn around. So I want people to understand, like, if you have a goal and you think of it that way, don't think of it that way. They gave themselves a traditional value of what marriage was. Today, their marriage is stronger than it was when they got married. Over time, things strengthen if you work on it, if you grow. But you have to find the right person for you. My dad is very fortunate. He had my mom. Is my mom fortunate that she had my dad? Yeah, right? It's, it's go, it goes both ways. However, the pain and the suffering that she had to go through is different because, again, even At that time, she had to give herself a stronger mindset because she was trying to do everything by herself. And even though she wanted support and things like that, he was just in his whole phase of, I'm going to do me. And it wasn't until he was told, hey, you need to take care of your family. That right there was that wake up call for him. And so I saw that firsthand. So now when I had to step into being a father, step into being a husband, I saw the negativities from that relationship. But then I also saw that they stuck it out. So when my marriage, if we have our hiccups or when we have our hiccups, I understand that it's a moment where it's not going to be nice. It's not going to be pleasurable. We're not going to be happy. But my happiness is not dependent on her and her happiness is not dependent on me. I need to do what I need to do so that everyone else around me can benefit. We talk about our cup overflowing. We worry about ourselves. And then, of course, at that point, everyone else is going to prosper. But then there's an aspect too. Are we making sure that the people that we're walking this journey of life with are with us at every junction? Because if you look back and they're not there, what happened? Did you leave them or did they decide not to go with you? As men, we should be the leaders. But again, that's the masculine type of mentality. Woman, if you want to have that masculine type of mentality, and you want to be the leader in the relationship, kudos, go for it. But understand that's the expectation before you go to marriage. So when you step into marriage, if you want to be the leader, you stay the leader. It's not, oh, I don't feel like being the leader anymore. Can you be the leader? You literally picked the guy who didn't want to be a leader. Now you want him to rise into the role of leadership? That takes time. That takes years. So if you want him to be a leader and you're getting tired of being a leader and you decide and you want to make that shift, get a mindset coach, number one. Number two, you need to become very clear on your next step. There's no more wishy-washy after this point because once he becomes a leader, he's not going to change. When he decides to lead, you decide to follow. That's just the way it is. So if you want to be a follower, be a follower. Allow him to lead. But if you want to be the leader and have him follow you, understand that too. And keep that relationship going that way. Do not wishy-washy. Oh, I want this. I want that. I want to make some changes. Make some changes. But understand, leadership is addictive. When it comes to control, you can't control your partner. You might think you can control them, but you can't. Oh, I know people are going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, someone can tell me to delete my account and, I did, and, I, and I'm going to delete my Instagram account or something like that. That is not control. I cannot control someone's thoughts, feelings, and actions. However, people will relinquish your power to someone. So now their thoughts and feelings and actions are controlled by that person. Does a person control you or do you relinquish your power? Most people relinquish your power. You're not being controlled. You're just giving your power away. And if you don't give your power away, are you doing the wrong thing, right? Because you're supposed to be following. No, because you can still be a follower and still have your own thoughts, your own feelings, and your own actions. Because 
as the support in a relationship is not so much of you got a leader and a follower or two leaders or two followers. As a leader, especially today, the term in the job has morphed. No longer is the leader the lone only decision maker because a leader now is going to ask the community, ask the people that are following them for advice, for opinions, for some guidance. It's not that they don't know where to go. It's just that they're making sure that they stay on the right track. It can be very difficult for a leader to have a group of people follow them if they're always constantly doing what the leader only wants. That can create, again, mutiny. We are not trying to create disparity in a relationship. We're trying to cultivate meaning and a togetherness that happens. That's the magic of marriage. Yet, the magic of marriage is being shunned because of people's expectations that are not being talked about, about people's happiness that is going to be up to them, or just immediate gratification. If something is broken, I would rather get something that's new than fix it. Or if something is broken, I'm going to look for a quick fix to make me feel better, whether it be drugs or alcohol or sex. Whatever it be, we go out and we do those negative behaviors, trying to get positive results for ourselves. I wish it was going to be as simple as marriage is going to be one of those things where as long as you talk about expectations and you know their love language and you communicate, everything's going to be happy. It requires an immense amount of awareness to be married and to understand the hidden conversation that happens in someone else's mind. It takes years and years of practice. I'm still learning. I have seen it in my grandparents, my parents, and now in my marriage that sometimes a simple conversation or a whisper can be a yell, can be a shout. Listen to that and then grow from that. There's no reason why two people can't find meaning together. But if you don't have clear expectations before the marriage, if you don't constantly communicate along the way, if you don't have good, strong values and ideals that the person holds true to what you want, how many kids, how much sex, all of that, if that is not talked about before marriage, you're going to find that there's a lot of things that you might not know before marriage. And some of those things are going to be non-negotiable. So you're not going to change if you're a male and you're like, no, I'm going to be the leader. Because if you're just going to have a woman who's going out, you know, on OnlyFans and things like that, most likely that man should not be in that relationship. He should get a divorce with that woman. However, if a woman wants to be in a relationship with a man who wants to lead, she should be that support model for him. She should also give him advice along the way. And as the leader, as that man is the leader, he should listen to his woman, listen to her, understand her. And then that's how you grow together. It's not so much my way or the highway. I'm an alpha. You know, things are done my way because as you can see, words can contradict each other sometimes. It's important that you understand what you want in your marriage. Strive for that each and every day. You make some adjustments each and every day. And then the end result should be you having a happy, successful marriage. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be simple. But it is a process that anyone can do. And it's replicatable again and again and again. Now, you should get married only once. If you get married and it works, it's because you made it work. If you get married and it didn't work, you didn't do your due diligence before the marriage. Sometimes people don't want to be alone, so they rush into something that they don't know where they're going to get into. Sometimes you can get a bad hand. I understand that. Sometimes you have to move on. But that shouldn't be a commonplace thing. 50% of marriages shouldn't end in a divorce. It should be 20%. That is the amount of things that can happen, about 20%. So that means 30% of marriages can be saved but are not being saved. So we're just getting into the mentality of if, it, if it's broke, don't bother fixing it. And I encourage people, if you're having struggles and troubles in your relationship, to get a coach, get someone who's going to be there to guide you. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be one of the coaches I had on. It could be a pastor at your local church. As much as I don't want to say therapist, it could be a therapist. I just don't like how therapists work when it comes to relationships. I think there can be better people. All right. Talk to a lawyer. I think that's going to be a great person to speak with too about that too, because you can see the repercussions of your actions for divorce. 
it's going to be bad for the man. Maybe the woman comes out on top, right? Typically, that's the case. She gets a house, the kids, pension, 401k, things like that. But besides the money, all of that can be retrieved, right? Men who come to me who are broken after divorce or separation, I build them up better than they have ever been built before. And then at the end of our time together, it takes about six months, they're like night and day difference. And what happens typically at that time, the lady, the woman, the wife, the mother, whatever, is looking at this man saying, whoa, he's a good man. I let this go. And that's what we want, right? This is what you had. This is what you relinquish. This is not a pun to say, I'm getting back at you. This is just to show you that in our world today, there's not going to be many men who are going to be that masculine leader figure. If you find someone like that, hold on to them, ladies. And if you are a male and you have a feminine nature woman, love her, appreciate her, cherish her. Neither person is on a pedestal. Each person has a role. Each person has a glory that they can live in. Allow them to live in that glory and then allow your relationship to be prosperous. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, you can email me coaching in session at gmail.com and I'll see everyone on the next episode of Coaching in Session. Until then, everyone take care.